We all know scared money don't make money, but did you know that no money can make money? No money spent. We got some coins. Let's go. If you're trying to build the best team in Madden, we'll head on over to instantmuckcoins.com to avoid the packs, save some racks. Link is in the description below. Use code CC now for 20% off. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. In my wrist flick, I can't settle for a quarter real fast. Need a bare maximum word of Khalil Mack. More so ambitious. Oh, God. Hey, what is going on, Madden family? Welcome to another episode of No Money Spent, the series where we don't spend any money on a mud account. And we grind it out. We are on our goal to 99 overall. If you enjoy No Money Spent, please make sure you hit the like. And if you're not subscribed and you're here, what are you doing? Subscribe. Watch the whole thing. There's an entire playlist. We are almost 70 episodes deep. It is crazy, but let's roll into it. We did finish weekend league. We're going to go over uh, how we did this weekend. All right. Show you a change we made to the team. We're going to maybe do some of these training packs and then we're going to add a gameplay on at the end. So you see here we are 18 and seven. We started out really, really poorly with Rich Gannon. All right. We've been using Rich Gannon for a long time. I hate that card. <laughs> Do not like it at all. So I quick sold him. You're going to even sell him. I quick sold him. We needed training to get the guy we wanted to use for the weekend. Now I'm going to tell you, this is, this is important. Okay. This is the most important part. While I used and got Randall Cunningham and I fully powered him up, which is not something we normally do. I am going to sell him right now. Okay. Not that he wasn't really good because he was, but because his price is going to go down. I know it's going to go down. It's not going to be the same, right? And if it doesn't go down enough, we can go get Sean Watson or someone else if we need to in a pinch. So here's what Cunningham looks like. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to refund him. We're going to refund that card and we're going to sell it right now. That is the smartest thing for us to do, honestly. Uh, it sounds crazy to do, but it's the truth. He's still 900,000 coins. We bought him for about that. We are not going to really lose many coins. Now, that's okay, right? I'm okay with it. He'll sell. I'm sure he'll sell for nine. Uh, a lot of people are looking to use this card. Take our coins back. We'll be fine. Fine. We'll pick up another quarterback if we have to. We'll pick him up if his price comes down. There's no reason for me to keep a quarterback that is this expensive on my team for a couple days when I'm probably not going to play. And I can just make that conscious decision to not play for a couple days, right? So Cunningham, as great as he was, I loved using him. Uh, he was phenomenal on the field for us. He played way better than Gannon. He wanted a higher clip than Gannon. The reason we only won 18 games is because Rich Gannon sold us. He was terrible, terrible, right? So we're going to take some coins. We're going to try some of these training rules. I'm going to show you a gameplay. It was a really, really close, really good gameplay with Cunningham. Let's get this training. We are just going to rock with 40,000 training for this. Between the training variety pack and the 83 plus legends player, if you want to make coins, you probably need more because you're going to have some duds and all that. But I don't want to go too far in uh, on here, but <laughs> Yes, please. 30K right back. We spent 200. That's 30 back already. That is nice. Uh, maybe we can hit some cards here. Juju's power up. Probably not exactly the move. Um, and if you want to do the training pack or you want to do uh, the legend version of the pack, you know, that's up to you. I think the smartest way is sort of mix them up a little bit. Use the legend cards that you pull. Uh, put them into the Cunningham set. Right? makes sense it makes sense it just makes sense um let's see what we get here in 86 lance all worth again for what we are doing just the variety pack here any cards we pull i'm just gonna sell i'm not gonna re-roll them or do anything like that just to see can we make any amount of coins even if we make 20 or 30k off doing this uh that's pretty big for a no money spend account now maybe we don't make that every time Maybe we get really lucky and hit a big card. Who knows? Kyle Van Noy is not that card. But to me, it's worth the risk of just trying this out over here. Uh, we're not putting a lot on the line. We 
put 200k on the line. Technically, there's no way we make zero coins back. Obviously, we've already made the 30. Uh, plus some of these other players. There's another 3k we'll make back right there. So, uh, just worth a try. And then, like I said, we will hop into some gameplay uh, that I'm going to post come for you guys. Should, should be okay. Uh, like I said, it was a good game. I enjoyed playing it. Uh, we played a couple really good opponents and really good games on this account this weekend. I uh, didn't get to record them all. I recorded a bunch of the first early games, but they were kind of lopsided. And I'll be honest, that's not what I want to show you guys. It's not really what I want to show you. I don't want to necessarily show you a, a random game of Randall Cunningham throwing for 400 yards. And just be like, oh my God, look how good he is. Well, we know that. We know that. Well, like, we know these guards are good. We can put on a facade and have an amazing gameplay. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Okay, now people are going to say you should sell these uniforms. I would just quick sell them. Their training value anyway. Why not? Uh, Marcus Peters, power up, not good. So we're going to have like at least six more of these. Uh, we have not made 200k back yet. That's okay. You're always... Like one card away, one decent card away. You could pull a monster out of here. I have not done that personally yet on either account. Uh, I wish I had, but I haven't. That's okay. That's okay. Let's say if we lose a few coins, uh, it's worth the risk. Redux, come on, come on. 90 A-Rod, not bad considering he's getting that MVP card. I guess probably by the time you see this, it'll be today. So that's not bad. Uh, 89 Yonda, also good. Also good. I like that. I will take it. Uh, what are we getting here? Big 50k quick sell. Let's go. Let's go. So we made 80, 90k in quick sells. That's not bad. And this is probably our final one. And a 93 Mayfield. Let's go. We made coins doing this. Maybe that's not the norm. It may not be the norm, right? That's fine. And that is fair. Um, but between these couple cards here. Some of these other low cards. We should have definitely made coins. Rogers is 40 something K. Mayfield sitting right here, probably 60, 70, 80 K. Let's go. We made coins. Let's hop into the gameplay. And I will see you guys there. All right. So we are in a weekly game here. Randall Cunningham at the helm, 99 overall. Uh, going up against uh, who Juju is here. Uh, he was, he was going to run some kind of Madden 20 ish stuff. Yeah, it's still effective. A lot of what happened in Madden 20 is still effective. It's not as effective at all, right? Running the strong H wing and all that is, is definitely still a thing, but it's not as, as big of a thing. So one thing you notice here is I'm making sure that I'm always flipping my play to the strong side here uh, to help blow up the stretch. You've got to do that, right? You, you want to have your numbers to the strong side, especially against this formation when you will know exactly when they're running it. There's a tell. Uh, if you go to try to man someone up <laughs> and you look at the fullback, he won't have an icon over him. It is what it is. Um, so preparing to do this and, and, and getting ready to stop someone who's going to be running this offense can be very tricky. Uh, if you have someone with inside stuff over on the side of the, the stretch, he has potential to blow it up. Uh, here in this case, I'm crashing towards the run as well. I'm using the middle linebacker. Uh, on the run side as well. So he he tries to do this quite a bit here. <laughs> he tries to do this quite a bit. Uh, and he goes to bunch here. Now, whenever I see someone come out in bunch and they're not normally in bunch, I normally feel like, hey, you're probably not very good at bunch. And a little bit the case here. Now, bench pivot is a great play. Phenomenal play here. But we obviously know how to defend this and, and, and do stuff with it. Uh, and he's going to go back to the strong H wing. I'm not going to make you guys watch a ton of the strong H wing stuff here. Uh, but I believe there's one right here. The inside stuff blows it up. Uh, so I'm going to fast forward here a little bit for us. Um, and then he's going to, I want to show, uh, this play here. So he gets in bunch tight end Again, he's, he's running fairly community. We actually had this really, really boxed up and he rolls out of bounds there on third and 11 turn to fourth and 17. So we get the stop. And so just the way he ran that play. For PA boot over, I knew he wasn't going to be a phenomenal boot over player. Uh, a bunch tight end player wasn't overly concerned if he went back to that. Now, I do run a different defense against it. 
uh, something a little more specific and it works well against a more basic boot over uh, someone who is an expert at running gun bunch set end that's its own problems <laughs> that's its own problems but again when you're playing a good player you're going to be playing a good player and they're going to be doing different things here uh, so offensively uh, I'm going to be sticking to my single back ace scheme here under the run and gun playbook. Again, I'm not doing a whole lot here offensively, um, especially early on. You know, I want to see what they're doing. What defenses are they going to be running? Um, so, you know, I've got stretch and I've got dive and I can pass out of here. I've got a couple things which I can do. And again, I want to test them out. And we see here he's in palms. <laughs> palms is something that... You need to play against considerably to learn what's going to be open. And right there, I didn't think that safety was still going to be there. I thought the safety was going to bite down on the in route. He did not. All right, so we threw the pick. Totally my fault, right? Totally my fault. Shouldn't have done it. But I recognize it after the play. Like, okay, if I don't want that safety there to throw that post, I either need to wait or do something to take him away from there, right? It's pretty basic. It is what it is. Uh, so again, he's going to go back to what he does. We give him the ball back. It's okay. He got the ball first. We had to stop. I'm not overly worried or concerned about that when it happens to us because we're fine. You know, um, it's not the worst thing in the world. Now here, he actually runs a nice little pass play here. Uh, great drag to TKLs. Uh, I have no issues with that at all. Uh, it was a nice play by him there. He's going to get down to the goal line against us here. Again, we gave him a really short field. No real chance to force him into back in the bunch or bunch tight end or something like that where I felt like he was not as comfortable. He's obviously probably, let's, I'm just going to guess, he ran strong H-wing last year. So it's probably one of his uh, little go-tos here. He knows how to run it very well. He knows how to pass out of it a little bit. He knows the runs. A lot of people feel more comfortable running the ball. It is what it is. Uh, so he's going to get his full back dive in here and go up seven again, which is totally fine because he got the ball first. It's fine. Even though we give it back to him, I'm not, I'm not worried uh, at all, at all. Uh, n nothing about this is worrisome. He didn't show me enough. Uh, I felt like we did a good enough job stopping the run at times anyway. But when someone gets within the five, it's really, really hard to stop someone. Uh, here regardless. So, uh, here I go to audible because I'm again, I assume he's in palms and I know that this against the basic palms should be open and it is right. Just simply it is now that's something I expect him to adjust to because it was such an obvious change that we did, right? We audible formations do all that. So if I do that again, I have in my head, well, maybe he'll audible. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll protect the sticks. Maybe he'll, he might do something a little bit different there. Um, so what we're going to do here is really just take advantage of the fact that he is leaving his curl flats or his flats or whatever he has it on. They're deep. Anytime someone has those deep flats attack short, that's what I want to do. Even with Cunningham, uh, that's the plan. Now he's rushing four here and he's doing a, it's, it's going to be tough to get out of the pocket. I'm not sure if he has contains on or not. If we're going to have to step up in the pocket, especially playing under center, it really does limit what we do. If I drift too far back, we're going to get instantly shed. If I step up, we may step up right into a block. <laughs> so uh, that's what we need to do. So again, as part of it, as you reach the goal line, the field gets smaller. I'm going to run the ball a little more. And that's part of the reason why I did end up switching playbooks because I didn't have that, that grind them out inside the 10 drain the clock sort of formations. When I was in run and shoot, they had nothing under center. So, uh, it hurts, but here he went to cover two, uh, super easy touchdown for us there to tie the game up. Cool. Right. Seven, seven, uh, no problem. So we're going to get up to here and give him the ball back. Now there's, a, there's only two minutes left now and we get Paul half. All right, so we get ball half Cunningham through uh, passes the correct way, even though we threw a pick. That was our fault, not Cunningham's fault. Him having two minutes doesn't scare me, right? His offense has not been explosive at all, 
at all. We gave him a short field. Uh, so look right here again, we're running out and this is actually a really, really nice play uh, where he sort of scooted back across the field. When we let go of our blitzer again, mobile quarterback gaining still technically mobile, not mobile enough for a spy, uh, but, but a great play there. Okay. So he's going to go to the gun bunch here. Uh, I don't know why he sort of got out a bunch at end. It worked. I would have tried it again. I probably would have run like an inside zone from it this time uh, just to check. But here again, he's going to go into bench pivot and it's completely covered, completely covered again. All right. So he's ran that twice. It hasn't worked at all. You know, the sack would have been really nice there because again, we're forcing a timeout potentially or we're taking the clock either way. Uh, good for me. So again, he's going to go to bunch to end here again. I, I, I play late to me. And again, I would have run the ball. But right here, he's going to just try to do the same thing. Uh, I'm trying to play right there and <laughs> panic, 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 throw, throw the ball away. When you get in that situation and there's nothing open, don't force a bad pass. We all do it. I do it. You do it. Even the best players in the world will do it sometimes. Live to fight another down, especially right before half. That's so crucial. Uh, so he's going to give us the ball there. Uh, again, looks like maybe a little palms or man here. Not 100% sure. I don't remember. Um, but the fact that he was on his safety there makes me think he's probably in man. Uh, right here, maybe switch back up to palms or something like that. Again, let's play it safe. And I actually was trying to throw the ball there. I remember. And I double tapped it. So I pump faked, which probably, oh, let's be honest, probably helped us out there a little bit. Uh, so second and 19. Again call timeout it's like okay I, if i can get any points here this is going to be huge 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 for us and he runs into our player illegal contact now the question is do you accept the penalty or decline it there's a difference of uh, 10 yards there but i take the first down 10 yards is nice the first down is even better for me here uh for sure so again, like right here, I'm going to try and switch things up on him. Maybe see if he's in palms. Can we catch him on something here? Uh, it doesn't really look like it. So we're just going to run out of bounds with Cunningham. Again, use that 96 speed there. There's no spy with the play action. It's going to really hinder the contains. And if he has any out there as well, allow us just to get outside the pocket uh, as good as possible to hear. It feels like he's in man, right? It feels like man. It look, it's got to be man. It's got to be man. So we're going to throw it to Tyreek and we get an under pressure. <sighs> okay. That happens to all the quarterbacks. That happens to all of them. But we're still, we're out of field goal range. It's third and one. So I'm, I'm just, I, I just want to pick up the first down. I just want to pick up the first down. I want to secure three. I need to secure three here because if we're getting the ball outside of half, it's going to be beautiful, right? So again, since we have identifier on here and the fact that he's totally given away who he's using, uh, makes it a little helpful to know that like, okay, this could be man. Uh, and so again, it is man there. We're going to throw the underneath. I think we might've had that post open a little deep. That's okay. Not too worried about it. Uh, we're, we're doing our best to secure points here right before half. Got to play smart, right? Got to play smart. We're going to roll out with Cunningham when we throw it and again, again, throw on the run. That's just part of the game. Probably need to throw a little bit of roaming on him, right? That's two passes. I love Cunningham. Cunningham has played great, but that is two passes, which have just taken us out Two touchdowns instead of 14 to seven, it's going to be 10 to seven painful problems. One under pressure, one on the run. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts me watching it back a little bit, but again, going up 10 to seven and a half, uh, is fine. Right. And we get ball. So again, we're going to come out and try to do exactly what we can do. We've passed the ball pretty well. We've made all but one good read really. And right here, just pressure again. He's got the cover four out there. Ooh, gave me a little bit of trouble there. I should have tried to throw that post again. Maybe gets picked. Derrick Henry just gets in our way. 
He doesn't go out on the route. It's a problem. That's a bug in the game right now uh, where the running back sometimes won't go out on the route initially. It's weird. Uh, so Derrick Henry goes out there again. And Lawrence Taylor is just taking souls right now. He just took someone's soul. Wh whoever we have out there. He just... See, look, I had to look at it. I was like, what does he have on him? <laughs> like, he's killing me. He's killing me. Now, we don't have edge protector or anything over there, but I didn't think we really needed it. And so right here, I'm just going to scramble with Cunningham and try to get there and get out of bounds a little bit. And we fumble. Okay. We fumble. So I'm going to say this, right? I hit stick pretty well. Across my 50 games a week in league this week. I don't recall causing a fumble. Maybe it happened. But I know there was a lot of time. Okay, I recall one actually. It was on a quarterback. Quarterbacks who don't fumble enough in this game. So my urgency of getting out of bounds wasn't nearly as high as it probably should have been there. Fair? Is that fair? I think it's pretty fair. Still my fault. You take a hit stick with the quarterback and you fumble. There's only one person to get upset about. Okay. So 14 to 10. He's gotten all of his points off of really short fields off of turnovers. Right? All of them. Every point has come on that. Uh, so let's go back here into our drive now. Now there's a ton of time left. I can't really clock the game out. <laughs> like virtually impossible here. But since we have Cunningham again, use the wheels as best as we can i try to get out of bounds we get hit don't fumble that time right but we need seven here but just in case we get stifled in the red zone i don't want to play really 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 slow so here we go we go to that same audible again hoping okay maybe he did he's not going to do the right thing here but he actually covers it perfectly with his user and there's just people open downfield just a lot of people open downfield good defense by him overall can't cover everything you can't uh when you play palms or match coverages and stuff at sometimes stuff like that happens it's just gonna happen is what it is so again i'm still trying to figure out the best way for me to beat this palms but i'm really trying to beat it deep and i'm trying to beat it deep way too often here and that's a problem because you could start just throwing picks because oh this could be open this should be open i think this is going to be open it's an interesting area right here. Again, throw the ball away, live to find another down. But I did see something there on that play. That running back wheel route was wide open for us. Third and five, right? It was wide open. We're going to pocket that. And we're going to do it again immediately after. Because again, I, I see it. But again, right there. Do I need to throw it there? No. We can hold that one. We can put the route on the field, but if we don't throw it, it's not going to be in his mind there, especially when there's another way for me to pick up the yards in the first down. That is something that we have not done. This is a route we have not thrown yet this game, and it's something I want to keep. I want to hold into a crucial situation, and I think that is one thing that a lot of players lack, um, honestly, and that is the idea and the ability to have that one play that they're going to go to in a very crucial cr um, kind of clutch situation here, right? Now, Cunningham is just dead tired here, so we just have to run out of bounds. We're not going to be able to pick up the first down. He's tired. He's red or blue or whatever color he is right now. I'm not sure. Um, so third and three here. Again, clock winding down. Maybe we can try to do something here. Again, this is a first down I'm going to need. You see, I'm setting up the running back wheel this time. And I'm setting it up even more with the little out route there. I'm really, really setting it up like, okay, this is the time I'm going to go to it here. I need to pick up this first down. I need seven points. I can't get stopped on this play. I cannot get stopped. So again, we're going to go to it right there. And we finally go to it. He's nowhere near it. Perfect. We saved a play to pick up a crucial third down and put ourselves in a better, just much better position to win. Uh, so we're going to try to run the ball in here. We do get in there. Now we are up three. Perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. He hasn't driven the field on us all game. Has he? Nope. You give him 20 yards, he's getting points. 
when he needs to go 75 or 80? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out here. Uh, so we're going to kick the ball off three and a half minutes left. Again, he's going to go to what he's comfortable with. When you see someone at this point in the game, right? Down in the fourth quarter, they are going to come out in their best formation. Probably this tells me right away. This is, this is really what he wants to run. He doesn't want to run the other stuff. This is how he feels. He can move the ball. Definitely the best. And even though at times he's gotten that edge on us with this particular run, I don't think he can do it every single time. We only need to get him in the backfield a couple of times and we did there and he's going to go to bunch that end again here. Okay. This is obviously his second favorite thing to run, not bunch or um, bench pivot or whatever it may be. So again, he's going right here. I'm going to try to protect right there. We are there. I'm just a little bit late and that's okay. Third and three. It's fine. Even though a field goal ties the game up, I don't care if he ties the game up as long as he didn't take the lead, because if he takes the lead, now we're down four a field goal. Doesn't do anything for us. I just want to hold him to three. That's really, truly all I care about here is three points, three points, three points. So him going to something completely different here. It's always going to, I feel like it's going to be one of two, maybe three things, right? You have levels, you have PA crossers and you have dagger in that formation, right? It's always going to be one of those three things. He goes to dagger. I was more trying to sell out a little bit personally for levels. That was what was in my head. The dagger works out really well. So again, what does he go back to what he's comfortable with? That's what everyone's going to do every single time, right? You, you, but the good thing here now is even if he gets three, even if he gets seven, uh, we're, we're going to have time. We're going to have time. It's almost, I'm almost rather play a little more aggressive in this situation too, right? Like just a little more aggressive. So he gets the third one. Why is he going into this formation? I have no idea. I had no idea why I went to there. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. You've just picked up four yards of carry. It's third and one. This is a pretty big first down. You know what I would do? I would come out in strong H wing, but he comes out in goal line. Okay. Well, he's, he scored twice on goal line runs, I believe. Um, but we're ready for it. We know that this is probably the fullback dive. So that's what we're going to run commit for. And he's not going to get the first down. There's this is much more. This is, this is a much worse call than the strong H wing. In my opinion, he hurries up and he goes to the power O, which he had before. And this time it doesn't work. He goes to weak side power. O. now, while that can be very effective against the run commit, it is not always effective against the run commit. It's kind of 50, 50, maybe a strong H wing has picked up positive yards way more than 50% of the time, 75, 80%. Oh, that's what I would have done. I wouldn't have gone to goal line there, or I would have tried to sneak it at least one time just to see because not every defense is really good at sneak. Uh, so we go right here again, we set up the wheel. Bam to the other side. He's not ready for it. We have a symmetrical formation. Put the wheel where we want. Pick up the first down. And that basically is going to end the game here, right? Uh, really, really hard fought game. A game that with two mistakes on our part, kept it close. We kept him in the game. Uh, Cunningham missed a couple throws. Missed a couple throws. Um, but while the score says 14, 17, well, the score says we're winning by three to me personally, this feels much more like a 24 to seven game, the way it was played. I don't know if you guys, I mean, you guys watched it. You tell me if, if I'm wrong, but that's the way it feels to me. Uh, so again, right here, he's, he's, he's probably winning man, right? He's got, he's, he's got to be in man here. So I'm going to pass in that situation because a first down wins the game. Ah, give me, give me the, I, I want my first down, but that is going to end it. We're just going to take knees here. 
uh, for the rest of the game. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. I know I skipped around a bit, but I tried to do as good as possible. Be great. I love you guys. I'm out. Peace.